Um, kia ora, everybody. So, uh, I'm pretty sure, I look around and I'm like, I'm pretty sure you all know me, Makerita. Um, and, <laughs> um, oh, I'll tell you what, the pressure was on when Paulina's email came out on Thursday and she called me a gifted speaker. And I'm like, oh my gosh, um, <laughs> never been called that before. Um, but hey, we'll take it. Um, so thank you, Paulina. Um, to God be the glory, seriously, yeah? Um, I want to start this morning um, with the year 2018. So if that wasn't such a good year for you, hang on in there, yeah? Um, 2018, that year started with Dunedin experiencing a heat wave, temperatures in the 30s, and that was ongoing for them. Um, in the year 2018, Auckland launched it's safe swimming tracker, and we've been trying not to swim in our own human waste ever since. Um, in politics in New Zealand, Bill English resigned and was replaced by Simon Bridges. And then our Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern, took her one-month-old daughter, Nee, to the UN, and she became a superstar. Um, and in New Zealand, um, Porphyry was held for um, some visitors from overseas, um, you might know of them, Barack Obama, and the newly married Duke and Duchess of Sussex, um, Harry and Meghan. Um, New Zealand also marked the 125th anniversary of women's suffrage. Um, it was a great year. But in, on, uh, in October of that year, a Category 5 hurricane, um, powerful and destructive, hit Central America, Cuba and Florida. A total of 74 people died, and it caused $25.1 billion in damages and almost $4 billion worth of losses to agriculture. Um, along the southeastern coast of the USA is a small community called Mexico Beach, which is part of Florida. Anybody? Nobody's been there. Nobody's cheering. Ah, <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> Of course. Um, so, yeah, so you know the area, and it was devastated, right? Um, Mexico Beach was referred to as Ground Zero. It faced wind speeds of up to 260 kilometres per hour. Nearly all the homes um, were totally destroyed, um, including a school and town hall. Um, the pier washed away. The water tower was knocked down, which is a biggie over there, right? The impact was devastating, but one house stayed standing. How did I go the right way? There you go. And that one house withstood the storm, the devastation. I listened to an interview with the owner and when asked, what did you do to make your house withstand the storm? He spoke of building deep foundations, right? Um, 40 feet long, 40 feet long piling, so that's 12 meters, right? That went um, 28 feet underground. That's about eight and a half meters, right? Um, he spoke of structurally making choices to securely attach those foundations to the strong concrete walls. I'm speaking to all the building people now, <laughs> right? But strong concrete walls and then anchoring the roof to the top of those strong walls, right? Every little detail um, he made sure was there. He said that they complied with all of the building codes, but they didn't dwell on the codes and instead went above and beyond what was required to make sure that it was sturdy and could withstand the big one. They just didn't realize that when they completed the build in April, the big one would happen in October. So why this story that I was recently um, made aware of? Well, this morning as I speak from the Gospel of um, John, chapter 15, I firstly want to honour um, all of you who have withstood so many storms in your lives. Um, some of you devastation, right? Who, those of you who, when others around you have walked away, from the faith or they've walked away from you, um, you've remained standing through relationship breakdowns, through your children's breakdowns, through your own breakdowns, through job loss, 
through All Blacks losses, um, <laughs> through financial hardship, major medical situations, um, you know, living with depression, living with anxiety. Um, when you've been offended, especially by other believers, you have remained standing. Thank you. Thank you for um, faithfully putting down deep foundations, and you're probably still doing that, yeah? So thank you for that. Thank you for consistently making the choices, um, including the difficult and expensive ones, to remain faithful, for not being perfect or even trying to appear perfect, because that's our say vineyard, sure vineyard, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, but instead being faithful and trusting Emmanuel, God with us, um, God with you in all of life. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face um, shine on you and be gracious to you. And the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. This morning, we connect with the words um, of Jesus, Jesus who um, is the word himself. And we connect with his kupu tohu tohu, which is advice or guidance, yeah, to his disciples just before he heads to the cross. These words are our guide to remain standing in a leaving, in a giving up, in a it's too much culture. Before we look at those words, Let's place when this is happening um, in John, let's place John 15, right? So Jesus has been spending a very special and intimate time with his disciples for the Passover um, feast where he washed their feet and they took part in what is often called the Last Supper and Jesus um, predicted his betrayal by his disciple Judas. Then there's a lengthy section in John's Gospel known as the Farewell Discourse, um, of which this morning's passage is a part of. Now Judas has left the group to do his thing, to be Judas. And Jesus directs, you see this at the end of chapter 4, he directs everyone, come now, let us leave this place. And as they are walking in the dark of night towards the Garden of Gethsemane, he begins the final of his I am saying that John records. I'm the good shepherd. I'm the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Sayings that are focused on Jesus as the life giver and includes an invitation to come to him, to believe in him. But now, Jesus addresses those who have already come to him with these words. I'm the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Out of the starting gate, Jesus is clear about his role and his father's role. These words that Jesus spoke, they echo imagery and themes um, very familiar to the disciples. Um, and we can read about this in the Old Testament. Israel was referred to as the vine. Um, in Jeremiah chapter 2, God says to Israel, I planted you as a fruitful vine. And Isaiah's song of the vineyard also speaks of God caring for his vineyard. But it's also noted that Israel um, was often referred to as a vine that produced bitter fruit. And quite understandable, given the hardship that they endured despite being God's people. But perhaps not reflective of the assurance and confidence that one might expect God's people to walk in. That's no judgment on them. That is, is, is a statement of, of the vine being um, an image. 
that the disciples were familiar with, the Jewish are familiar with. In this I am statement, what Jesus introduces his disciples to and calls us to is to recognise the bond we have with Jesus, that our very life depends on that bond. Jesus is the true vine. He replaces Israel. He's the true vine. That's not a rejection of Israel or Judaism, which was also known as the law, but it's the fulfilment of the law in Jesus. The people of God is no longer just with um, a particular nation, but in Jesus, there's a new people of God from all the nations, right? Jews and non-Jews. They're those who remain in him. And the Greek word here is meno. Um, and it also means that we stay in him. We live in him. We dwell in him. We abide in him. Now, Jesus is the true vine. The father is the gardener. He's the one who tidies up, who cuts away dead branches and the one who prunes. He's the one who cares for the vineyard. See what I did there? Um, so that it will be even more fruitful, right? God's committed to us bearing fruit. He removes things that keep us from bearing fruit because that's what all you amazing gardeners out there do. See, I don't include myself in that. Um, you amazing gardeners, you do this. You remove anything that is hindering growth. Um, gardeners, you protect um, your plants from pests that might attack and you make sure that the soil that your plants are in are rich in, in nutrients, right? The Father is the gardener. So Jesus is the true vine, the Father is the gardener, and then Jesus describes our role in this relationship, in this bond that we have, right? I'm the vine, you are the branches, yeah? If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers, and such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. See, the Father wants you to bear fruit. We are branches. Each of us is a branch. And no branch can bear fruit by itself, in and of itself. It must be connected to the vine. As a young Christian, I um, picked up on a phrase that I still hear um, quite a bit when it comes to considering if someone is a true believer or has a true walk with Christ, yeah. right? I put those words in air quotation marks because I find it unhelpful. Um, and thankfully, as I dug into, do into God's word, I discovered that none of us knows what is in anyone else's heart. Surprise, <laughs> right? We can guess by what comes out of their mouth um, or by their actions, but that still doesn't tell us the state of their heart. The word tells us only God can, and really, what business is it of ours? How about we take care of the state of our own heart? Anyway, the phrase is, look at the fruit, right? Look at the fruit of their ministry. Look at the fruit of their relationships. Look at the fruit of their family life, which usually includes criticising about kids, right? And the way they raise their kids. It's gorgeous. Look at the fruit of their living situation. What Jesus' words in John 15 highlights for us, though, is to not be obsessed about the fruit, but to focus on being connected to the vine. Right? Connected to the true vine. Christ flows through us because as a branch, we draw life from the vine. The vine that we also know as living water sustains us. Connected, remaining, living Dwelling, abiding in the true vine means we will 
bear fruit. Living water is not going to produce bitter or withered fruit. Bearing fruit is about relationship, not about doing the right things. The fruit of the vine is the fruit in Galatians 5. And if you know this, feel free to say it with me. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and my biggie, self-control. Yeah? This will be the fruit we bear because we're connected to the vine. Will we bear it perfectly? No. Is Christ in us perfect and doing a work in us that we would be more like him? Absolutely yes. Just as well, or all my insecurities would keep me from being up here doing something like this. Yeah. The scriptures, as um, it says in, in this particular part of the passage, the scriptures, the scriptures are an amazing connection to the life that Jesus gives, right? Just as he calls us in verse 4 to remain in him, and he also remains in us, Jesus calls us in verse 7 to remain in him, and his words remain in us. If you want encouragement in your faith journey, then find a believer in your world who is standing, despite storms in their life. Mm -hmm. I look around in this room, and there are so many of you who inspire me with this, right? Despite the storms in their life, they are still standing. Mm -hmm. Ask them to share with you what gets them through as they have abided in God's word. Because they will have abided in God's word. Yeah? Sometimes it feels shaky. Yeah? Abiding, connecting. It, 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 it's a shaky. You know, sometimes those foundations feel shaky. You might still be... I'm trying to, to fix those foundations. That's okay. Stay connected. Yeah? Stay attached to the vine. And in the remaining verses of the passage um, that we um, look at in John 15, right? Jesus speaks of the life-giving vine as being the love-giving vine, right? Jesus' love, his love, is rooted in his relationship of love with his Father. Our love is also rooted in our relationship to the Father through Jesus. And as we abide in his love, the true vine's joy fills us. Within ourselves, we can't generate enough joy to fill us, let alone overflow. Yeah, But as a branch, drawing from the vine, his joy completes us and overflows to our fruit. Fruit that in verse 16, Jesus calls fruit that will last. The life that flows from the true vine, from Jesus, is available to us all. But it does require us to be connected, to be a connected branch, right? A branch that is remaining in him. And remaining isn't simply about believing in him. It's crucial, but, include, but remaining includes being in union with him, right? It's a relationship. And in any relationship, both parties must be engaged, must be connected, remaining, abiding. Am I sounding repetitive? Do you think, do you think we kind of get it, right? Look. As I've observed and discussed with others and in my own experience of abiding, three key themes seem to pop up for everyone, which I pose here as questions which you might want to take into the week, into your time of reflection um, by yourself or in discussion with others. And the questions are, how does the word of God illuminate? Right? The word of God, what, what is, what's in the word of God with abiding? Right? Which is asking about the vine. Because in the beginning was the word. The word was... Yeah. Yeah, the word was with God. The word, the word is Jesus. Yeah? 
The second question is, what do I know of God's character? What do I know of the gardener? Our, our understanding of God's character is so crucial when the storms hit. Yeah? And so it's not what do I know of my pain? What do I know of God's character in the midst of my pain? The third one is how does he see me? Right? Which is looking at the branch and looking at our fruit. These three questions form the basis of a series um, coming up that I'll be taking later on. And, um, and so um, looking at the word of God, looking at the character of God, and looking at who we are in Christ. Yeah. So I finish um, as the worship band returns um, to stage. I finish with um, the graphic that I chose for today. Right? Those on Facebook, take a look at the post on Thursday and you'll see the, the picture. Right? The fruit is really obvious on this picture. Right? Plentiful, luscious bunches of grapes. The vine is what you can see running along the bottom of the picture. Yeah? Notice the vine. That vine is supporting it, right? That vine is thick and it looks strong, right? It looks weathered, definitely, right? But that vine is, is a very solid vine, right? What do you notice about the branches, anyone? They're hidden by the fruit, right? We don't need to be as branches, right? We don't need to be seen. Yeah? He sees us. We're connected. He sees us. We're connected to him. And his fruit is what is seen. His fruit, right? The fruit that comes and can only be produced by the vine, by the living water, by the source of life. So I want to invite everyone um, to stand and let's wait on God, right? As Moz um, and the team, um, are you doing um, Jesus, we love you? No, which one? Jesus, there is none like you. Great, yeah? Because that's our vine. <laughs> so, if we can stand while they lead us through just a verse and chorus, yeah? Um, as our final song, and then they're going to play softly. And I'd love to invite anyone up who might be hearing um, from God, right? What God might be calling you to share with us to encourage us this morning or to pray into this morning. Our Facebook um Fano, um, thank you for being with us um, today. And I pray that over the course of this week, that you would find that encouragement to keep connecting and keep connecting to the vine and to remain standing.